Hey guys, welcome back to Retro Rivals. You've seen our game room. Now you're gonna see our toy room, comic book room, workout room. Maybe it's a room where you cry when your workout's not going so good. I cry every day. <laughs> <laughs> so come with us and let's go check it out. Well, We've been wanting to make this video, well, I've been wanting to make this video for probably, well, since we started oh the YouTube goodness. channel. Yeah, it's yeah. It's been, what, close to nine months we've been doing this? Yeah. This is the other half of our basement. Yeah. And um, the main function of this room is basically a home gym, but it's also where I like to display all the toys and, and there's comic books and even some old wrestling magazines yeah. and stuff. The wrestling magazines, I think, are the only thing I kept from when I was a kid. Yeah. All the toys I had to collect afterwards. This was Scott's first love, was toy collecting. And then he moved on to the more expensive love of comic, comic book books. collecting. Yeah, your, your hobbies are expensive, but I love you. All right, I got a little pointer. I don't think I need it yet, though. Um, well, the He-Man, I got Battle Cat and Panthor with He-Man and Skeletor on them, and they're kind of in the center of these plexiglass shelves that I build. Kind of help display, you can see through them, I, I like them there, it makes it look nice. A um, couple of my favorite He-Man would be Buzz Off over here, I remember having him as a kid, and definitely He-Man, obviously. But I also had uh, uh, the, I think it's called the Battle Armor He-Man. I didn't get to have the regular He-Man when I was younger. I had Battle Armor. I don't know why. I think that's just what I ended up getting for Christmas or birthday. So ask mom for He-Man, that's what I got. <laughs> I think they're all from the early 80s. Let's see if I can find a date on this. I want to say 84. But all right, so I did find a date on it. It's uh, 1983, made by Mattel. It's fi I found it on his wing. You're gonna notice a theme here with most of my toys that I bought a lot of them from yard sales, eBay, stuff like that. I try to get them cheap, so a lot of them are loose, incomplete. They might be missing weapons, helmets, whatever. But it's more for the nostalgia, the memory of when I was a kid. So that's why I picked them up. All right, well let's talk about the Transformers here on the show. These Transformers aren't very retro. These are from like the first Transformers movies. And there used to be Alex's Transformers. There was a point when he was big into Transformers. I think he was, I wanna say four? I have a fun little story about this Transformer that came from Pat. Yes. Yeah, Uncle Pat. And that's what Alex used to call him when he was little. Um, I remember that at the time Pat was dating a woman that had a little girl. He opened his Transformer, she opened the baby we got her for Christmas, and they wanted to switch. <laughs> he was having more fun playing with her baby, and she was having more fun playing with his Transformer. <laughs> Shame on you. I had to tell that story so to Alex's future wife when you watch the What's YouTube, you can see this, you can see this story. If anybody has had one, they know how difficult these things are to transform. They're display only now. <laughs> I do have a couple of old ones on this shelf with it. I got a sound wave that's pretty loose, a little rough shape. It's a project for down the road. I want to try to restore it, get the couple extra parts that I need, some new stickers, all that stuff. And over on the other side, <laughs> see the Ultra Magnus? Yeah, I got Jetfire behind Bob, Bob's in the light, you've never seen that guy. But these Transformers look awesome, and I learned my lesson from when I was a kid. I gave away all my toys when I started liking girls, <laughs> and I wish I never got rid of them. So. I'm gonna keep him for Alex, and when he's my age and he has his own kids and he's starting to have that nostalgia for toys that he had when he was younger and he wants to share them with his kids, he has his toys and he'll be able to play with them. So, all right, up on the top shelf here, we got the LJN line of wrestlers 
from back in 1984. And the reason why I know that is because I checked Hillbilly Jim over here <laughs> earlier today. Pretty much this whole collection I picked up on Kijiji of all places for dirt cheap. I think I got almost the whole thing. I think they got it around 20 bucks or something. But you'll see I got some of the great tag teams from the 80s. I got the Heart Foundation here. I got, uh, oh, I can't remember the tag team, but it's Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov here. I wonder if I, maybe we'll find the name of them there if their tag team will pop it up. And I got the old favorites there I used to love playing with Kamala. He was like the ultimate bad guy there back then. The Kung Fu grip to chop Hogan all the hell. <laughs> you'll, you'll see I have a DC theme going on in each side of the shelves. I got Superman on one side, standing guard, and I got Batman. The Superman Alex had when he was young, I remember, distinctly remember him dragging that thing all over the house by the cape. And then somebody bought him Batman for a Christmas, and by that time he was pretty much out of it, so he, he didn't even touch Batman. <laughs> oh. I'll point something out, a little book, see if I can get it out here. <clears throat> Masters of the Universe. I don't know if I can find a date on this sucker. This was in this was made in 1985. So we actually picked this up at a yard sale. I think I paid 50 cents for it or something dirt cheap. But uh, I I remember having a few of these when I was a kid, picking them up at the book fairs at school. That's where I got them. So, when I seen it, that's the only one I've seen at any yard sale around here, so I had to pick it up. I want to talk about the rest of the magazines though. These are the only things I kept from when I was younger. I have a stack of them, and maybe we can show the complete pan around the room because it goes completely around the bottom of the room here. And I want to take one out in a protective plastic sleeve. Just Is that your favorite one? No, that's the oldest one I have. Oh. From June 1989. On the cover, they're talking about the results from WrestleMania 5. And what, what are we at now? We're in the 30s now. WrestleMania's, is it? Is it that much? We'll, we'll pop it up. I haven't been following wrestling for the last few years. Anyway, there's some pretty cool stuff. I actually looked through this earlier. And I want to point out a couple of things here to you guys. <laughs> you have inside the magazine is uh, our advertisement for WrestleMania 5. This is for the video that you can purchase. And if you bought the video, it came with a free watch. <laughs> and the video was $39.95. Suggested retail price. Three hours of explosive action. All right, next page over. This is relevant to our channel because this is an advertisement for Nintendo Power subscription. As you can see, I didn't cut it in order because we didn't have enough money back then, or I would have. Now, I remember looking through these magazines and always seeing these advertisements, and when I watched wrestling on Saturday morning, they always had the advertisements for their uh, superstars of wrestling bars, the ice cream bars. I don't think they had them in Canada, or they didn't have them up where I lived, and I always wanted to try it. <laughs> this is the back of the magazine. I just happened to look at it today. Now. This is an advertisement for a wireless controller for the NES. It was made by, I think, Acclaim. Yep, Acclaim. And it advertises that it works up to 30 feet away. I don't know, I've never seen one of those controllers. If I ever did, I would grab it just to say that I had one. I don't know if anybody has one. It'd be cool, send me a picture if you do. I'd just like to see one. I've never seen one on eBay or anywhere around town. I, don't, I thought that was cool just to see that. That's part of video game history. That, I don't know. It must be rare. I haven't seen them. Well, Do you have, I know you're going to tell the people all about this stuff. Do you have a favorite on this wall? On this wall? Mm hmm. Yes. I think I know what it is. Yes. All right. You can see Panther is in great shape. I only have a little bit of a rub off on his tail right there and a little bit on his chin right there but it's not completely rubbed off but it's it's thin. But underneath the feet, the belly 
and everything underneath the saddle is like mint condition and I also have Skeletor which has the half boot which as far as I know is the first one and is rarer I don't know what it's worth exactly but this came in the collection that I bought from uh, Buddy Dennis so of all the toys we have in this room, when I come in here and look at the toys, which is not often because those are my husband's toys and you're not allowed to touch them or play with them, but I love this one right here and it was a Christmas gift for Alex. I don't know, my, my brother bought it for him. He might have been five or six. He was so excited to get this Christmas morning. Yeah. And if anybody has ever played with one of these, they are the most cantankerous toys of all time. We nicknamed it Walking Falling Iron Man because he would walk and take a couple steps and then he was so heavy and so awkward, he would just fall right back. And it is my favorite. And Alex cried so hard until we gave it the nickname Walking Falling Iron Man. And then it became a running joke that he had so much fun with it just falling. Castle Grey Skull. It's, it's not complete, but uh, it was another thing that I got from Dennis. <laughs> so they're, they're hard to find especially complete. Eventually I'd like to track down all the pieces of it, put it all together, have a complete one, and then display it better than what it is right now. You'll see I got some old Transformers right beside the Castle Grey Skull. I got Trypticon, I got Devastator, Metroplex, you know. I even have this old GoBot. I don't know how many people watched GoBots back in the day, but I actually enjoyed them. I was a big Transformers fan at the same time. This one here is actually a cap gun, and I want to transform it for you guys and show you. My wife thinks it'll be funny if uh, she records me trying to remember how to transform this thing. Oh yeah, that's where the caps go. These are where the caps go. I don't even know if they still sell. Yeah, they must still sell cap guns, right? But these old, it's like an eight shooter kind of thing. He tells loose, been well played with. Somebody loved it a lot. And now you love it. I know, I love it. All right, right here you can see I got Omega Supreme. I actually have two versions. I have a complete version, and then I have the version that's just transforms. It's in, in the tank. It's just the tank version here. Now this toy here, for people that don't know about it, when it transforms, it transforms into almost like a railroad track kind of system. It, the, the wings on them turn into a train track kind of system, and then you transform the tank. The tank is motorized, and it will drive around on that track system. His arms, and legs transform into, um, I guess it would be like a rocket. They, the Voltron, I don't have a sword. You wouldn't believe how hard it is to track those things down. This is not the full size version. I think this one probably only measures in, I would say, in between six and eight inches, somewhere like that. So sword's probably only about four inches. I see lots of them that measure I think six inches or more, but that's for the bigger version. These ones here are all the pullback kind of car style. You pull it back and the spring tightens up and you let it go and it takes off across the floor. I don't know if you people recognize the guy in the middle. And that's Chavo Guerrero from WWE. This picture was probably taken, what would you say, 14 years ago, 15 years ago? If not longer, if not longer, I think it was in 2002. Yeah, I don't think it says, yeah, we don't have it on the back. See this baby face right here? That's me and I was younger. You got Chavo Guerrero, and you got my buddy Pat, also my workout partner there. I've known Pat for a long time now, probably. Oh wow, going on 20 years since I moved to Moncton. Anyway, this was at a local gym called Fit Deck. 
we used to love it there. Everybody knew us by name because we basically lived there. <laughs> Superman was my favorite. This was the only one I owned when I was a kid. And this one is in amazing condition. Even the cape still has the Superman symbol on the back. That's rare. Oh, is it? That'll wear right off. That will, those wear off like you wouldn't believe. Usually you find them with the cape and you'll see a little bit of yellow there, but you won't know you don't know what it is. But this one's in awesome shape. And it okay. still works. Pow 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 pow. That's super uppercut. Squeeze his legs together, and that's what happens. You know, I want to talk about this one here. This was an eBay purchase. Um, I asked Dennis because I bought probably three quarters of these from Dennis in his collection there. And this purple cape that's around it, you see he's complete with the coattails. But this, this is something completely different. I'm almost thinking this is off a different action figure. I don't know what it's off of, but as far as I know, it doesn't belong to him. But if anybody out there knows what it belongs to, could you post it in the comments so I know? It's got a hole in the back here. It looks like it goes, maybe someone's head goes through that. But other than that, I, I really have no idea. Mr. T, I think, was everybody's favorite. Well, my favorite, anyway. I bet a fool anybody doesn't like Mr. T. Um, I actually had all four of these growing up as a kid, but I also had the van that came in. Now, van, the van was big enough to put them all in, sit them in the seat and drive. I haven't been able to find that van at all now. I don't know if they're all get destroyed. I don't even know who made them. This was made in 1983. And I think if I'm reading that right, Canal product, it's 1983 Canal product. I don't know if anybody has the A-Team van sitting in their basement there. If you do, shoot me a message. I want to buy it. <laughs> as much as my wife might hate it, <laughs> and I don't really know where I'm going to put it, but they need a van. All right, so you're dying, you got your Dinobots here. Um, they're all in really good shape. None of them have their weapons. And if you've, if you're a collector and you go on eBay and you try to find their weapons separately, yeah, it's expensive. It sucks. <laughs> a little tiny plastic sword will cost you a ridiculous amount. Bullshit. Um, fun fact: Swoop on this side right here. I know I was told not to point at it. Point at In the cartoon, Swoop is chess piece. The blue in the cartoon. All right, I got Optimus Prime over here. Um, he's in his tractor trailer mode. That's actually the one that I bought off eBay that was junk, and I rebuilt it for Alex so that he could have an Optimus Prime G1 to play with. And he loved it so much as I tore that one apart and rebuilt it. I took measurements and I actually made a four foot high wooden version of them that is sitting in the game room right now. Maybe we'll show a quick picture of that for people that haven't seen them. If I had to pick a hero from childhood that I liked the most, it would be Optimus Prime. He's the ultimate hero, self-sacrificing, and he actually died at one point there. That was crushing. <laughs> I think this, if I had to pick a favorite G.I. Joe I used to play with when I was a kid, was this guy. His name, the only reason I didn't even know his name is because I left the tag, I stuck a tag on the back with his name on it, and Steamroller. And the only way you got Steamroller is if you bought the Mobile Command Center. I think I'm getting that name right. It was a huge vehicle. It folded out like a big toolbox, and I think it had three or four levels on it. I had it when I was a kid. It was a 
awesome. And if I could find a mobile command center now, I would buy it. I don't know where I'd put it because it's big. It's big. It's probably two and a half feet long, probably two feet high, and probably uh, about a foot wide. Now, I don't know where I would put it, but I tell you what, I'd, I'd find a spot for it. All right, see this guy? We got an eight pack. And uh, if I turn him around, also a ginger. So um, I didn't notice that when I was a kid, at least I don't think so, but now as an adult looking at it and saying, hmm, <laughs> I wonder why he was my favorite. <laughs> he used to kick all the other G.I. Joe's ass. Everybody, kicked everybody's ass because he's an angry Irishman. It's awesome. You can see the Incredible Hulk 271, which is the first appearance of Rocket Raccoon in a Marvel comic. Comic. I do have the first appearance of Rocket Raccoon in, I think it's more of a magazine, Marvel magazine. I'll show you that later. Then the Daredevil 168 is the first appearance of Elektra. New Mutants 87 is the first appearance of Cable. You'll know him from the Deadpool movies. Right now you're looking at the Avengers 57. That would be the first appearance of Vision from the Avengers movies for people that don't read the comics. All right, you're looking at Swamp Thing. I do believe Swamp Thing was probably my first big purchase for comics, if I remember correctly. I think so. I bought it, geez, probably eight years ago. That is the first, I do believe that's the first appearance of Swamp Thing. I know it's his first comic series. The three comics you are looking at right now are The Invincible Iron Man number 55, the first appearance of Thanos. That was a big purchase I got before the Avengers movies introduced Thanos. I don't know what the value is now, I actually haven't checked. Beside that, Alias. Al Alias is the first appearance of Jessica Jones. People may know Jessica Jones from the Netflix series. It was a good series, it was. especially the first season. It was. Titans and the NYX. Titans is the first appearance of Nightwave. For people watching Titans on Netflix, you'll know in season two, you see Robin become Nightwing. Nightwing's a really cool character. Um, I don't think he really gets, I don't know, he doesn't have a bad rap, but he doesn't get the, the glory like he, he doesn't get as much, what's the word I'm looking for? He doesn't get the yeah, doesn't get the accolades that he deserves. NYX comic is the first appearance of X23, which is basically uh, Wolverine's daughter clone, however you want to look at it. And what movie was she introduced in? Was it Logan? Yes, I think so. Yeah, that was a cool movie. It was a really cool movie. Yeah. I really liked it. All right, right now you're looking at the Uncanny X Men. I think that's 266. Yeah, can't even explain. Anyway, that is the first appearance of Gambit. There's been rumors for a couple of years now of Marvel making a Gambit movie. The person rumored to play Gambit in the movie is Channing Taylor. So the women will be watching the movie for sure. <laughs> And the comic right next to it, X Factor number six, is the first apocalypse. All right, you're looking at Amazing Spider-Man number 300 and number 700. Now, any, uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 300 is the first appearance of Venom. And there's also a funny story to how I acquired this comic. 
Um, I went down to my local comic book store, Comic Book Hunter here down on Main Street in Moncton. I have a file, I always get my same comics there, whatever uh, subscriptions I have. I walked in, yeah, how's it going there? Oh, not bad. So I went and picked up the comics on the shelf that aren't in my file. And by the time I get to the cash, they have everything on the counter for me, waiting. Well, this was in the pile. And I said, what's that? And he said, well, that's yours. I said, well, what do you mean? <laughs> he said, your wife just bought it for your happy birthday. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Are you shitting me? Seriously? She, got, she just called and she picked one up and uh, paid for it over the phone. I'm like, holy crap. No, so, it was a pretty cool surprise. So you're looking at the uh, piece de resistance of the collection here. My son made me a gift for my wife and I's wedding anniversary. Yep. I don't remember which one. He was three or four. I don't. So even... it would have been either our first or second wedding anniversary. Yes. So Dad got a comic because Dad collects comics. What Mom get? Bub kiss. Nothing. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll talk about the green elephant in the room here. This, <laughs> this wall that's green. You know, if you've seen any of our videos from before, this is our green screen. We come in the workout room and we try something cool, something fun there for the green screen. Um, maybe you'll do something now. Yeah. Maybe. This. Maybe not. And a little bit of this. I think I'm going to keep it as a secret for you so you only see it when, when the, video the video starts. Yeah. For everybody that stuck around for the entire video, um, I hope you guys enjoyed our little tour of our home gym slash toy slash comic book. I room. swear there's gym equipment in here, even though there you didn't some, see it. Yeah. It's there's, in here. There's some gym equipment. Yeah. <laughs> home gym. I say, I want to be done. All right. Not that I don't appreciate all our viewers, but. This took forever to film. Oh. It's a lot of toys when you're a big child. It's okay. You're my big child. If I have more room, I'd have more toys. <laughs> Till next time. Bye!